Everyone, good evening. Bruce Moffson, LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada, coming at you with another music video breakdown. The song tonight is Lonely by The Baby. Before we begin, just want to clarify how we're going to do the rest of the month. Next week will be a live stream on derealization. And at the end of the month, on the 28th, 5.30, of course, West Coast time, we'll be doing part two of understanding what goes into an assessment and hence also what to look for in a therapist that's actually going to be helpful for you with your issues. A little bit about myself. I have a master's in social work from University of Georgia, which I received about 25 years ago. And after my master's, I had to do a two-year post-internship before I could take the national exam and become a licensed clinical social worker. I have worked with patients from 3 to 83, and I've worked with literally thousands of people. I've worked inpatient, outpatient, emergency rooms, and I've also gone into prisons hundreds of, hundreds of times to assess prisoners. I have done also thousands of assessments as well as literally thousands of home visits to get a better understanding of the people that I'm working with. In addition, I've testified in court hundreds of times about people's mental health issues and what needed to happen for them to go forward to attorneys and of course judges. I've also testified dozens of, not testified, I've also spoken dozens of times mostly to law enforcement on how to work better with the mentally ill and what to be aware of. And finally, every two years I have to have roughly 40 CEU credits to keep my license current. Okay, let's get into the breakdown and here we go. Now, as always, I'm only going to bring up the clinical lines that I think are relevant and I'm going to do the lines, I'm going to break, do my analysis and go back and forth, back and forth. This song is complicated in a lot of ways, but it's very, very layered. So I want you to follow along with me as I go down and kind of tie things together. So here we go. Caught up in my feelings, I'll blank around and kill another blank. You ain't even got to push me. Now I'm feeling how I'm feeling now. I've been having mood swings like a Gemini. I can use the murder for therapy. I can make the news with it, break the internet. Have them all nervous and scared of me. Then get away sneaky clean, never seen a thing. All right, this is incident one. Now I felt that I found six different incidents that created issues for him on a mental health level. This is the first one. This is talking about the incident that happened in Walmart in 2018 in North Carolina where he shot and killed the man that he felt was trying to rob him and his family. And the feelings of rage and anger that he still has that he could hurt someone else. But notice and remember the gun. All right. Now, let's go to the line a little further down. Damn, look at what happened to hip-hop. Him at the Grammys and still got that blank cocked. Put out the camera with me and my blank out. Okay, this is incident number two. No level of respect of any or any type of love in the industry. It's dog eat dog. It's a very difficult industry to stay relevant in. And you're hot today and literally you're gone tomorrow. Changing all the time. But once again, he still needs a gun to portray an image that probably is not even realistic, but he needs that gun. So who, you know, who do I want to be? Who am I? Am I the baby or am I Jonathan? You start getting confused, but notice the tie-in. Gun at Walmart, gun at the Grammys. I have to have this to make myself, in a sense, relevant and protecting. Okay, then we're going to go to the chorus. And lonely, lonely baby, and you guys can see the chorus, you get it. To me, the chorus is very, very powerful in this song. And normally, when I've broken down dozens of songs already, I don't look at the chorus as anything that powerful. But this chorus is powerful for what he's really trying to say and what he wants the audience to understand by how he's saying it. This is how I'm truly feeling. I am by myself. I put on the costume, my alter ego, everyone saw the video, the Joker outfit. I can say and do things I cannot get away with if I'm dealing with reality. Notice how in the psych hospital, he's in the scrubs, he's in the Joker suit, makeup on, makeup off. 
you see his real face. You get to the point, you kind of like get yourself in three different sections. Who am I? What am I? And who do I want to be? Am I Jonathan? Am I the baby? It's confusing. And what role am I really playing here? Now, we're going to go on to verse 2. And I want to explain this in a second, but I want to read the lines first. All I got is a reason to act like I'm lonely, as if I got a reason to act like I'm lonely. I saw my big brother laid out with his brains blown out. It's been catching up to me. Blank, how would you act if your bro took his life? These lines are about his brother who took his life in 2020. Now, normally I would think that would be issue number three. It's actually issue number four because his dad died in 2019. That really is issue number three. The brother taking his life is issue number four. Now, we go to this. The best line is the line is, the best you ever had just to see it come crashing. I'm burning. You don't know the feeling. In the car with a bottle of liquor, a pistol, a lonely killer. Ain't no love at the top, just a lonely blank. Ain't no love at the bottom either. All these blood-sucking leeches and bottom feeders. Okay, this is incident number five, because this is, to me, is referring to the Rolling Loud concert. The comments that he made and the backlash from them where he was dropped from concerts and appearances. That's number five. And number six is he went from huge success to literally almost essentially being canceled. That's the sixth issue. And then I want to kind of use that line I liked a lot, the last line, all those blood-sucking leeches and bottom feeders. We all get to this point in life that we think that when we get to the top of our chosen profession, whatever that chosen profession is, I'm going to be surrounded in nirvana. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be great. But it doesn't work that way. People will still try and screw you. There's issues on a higher level, but there are still issues. It's never like, oh, hey, man. It doesn't work that way. That's why I tell everyone that I work with, no matter age, ethnicity, religion, background, you need a base of support, you need family, people that are truly in your corner to help you navigate the craziness of life and how we go through it. Then I'm going to go to verse 3 now with Lil Wayne. And Wayne's talking about various things, but I want to talk about the, the, the thing that really I believe that he brought Lil Wayne in was he's relatable with his own history of severe mental health issues. And because I saw the talk with Emmanuel Acho, you know, uncomfortable conversations with EM. And at the age of 12, he tried to kill himself. And he actually shot himself in the chest. And he states in the interview, had it not been for this cop taking charge of the situation, saying, forget about the drugs, forget about the alcohol, forget about the weapons. Screw this. Get an ambulance. And they're like, well, we just called an ambulance. This cop had enough brains to realize he was going to bleed out as a 12-year-old. And said, Wait, I'm not waiting for the ambulance. Grabbed him, rushed down, put him in his car, and put on the red, and drove straight to the hospital. Had he not done that, Little Wayne would have died of, of bleeding out. So I think that the baby saw in Little Wayne someone that's almost like a kindred spirit that has been through the same craziness in his own way and felt he could tie the song in together the way that he did. Finally, I want to talk about the chorus with the baby and Little Wayne. Again, lonely, lonely baby and going down. The first and back verses. The choruses, I'm sorry, are so important because the baby is trying to get you to read between the lines. That's what I got. There's that there's that 40 second piece in the beginning when he's the shooting and you know the police are coming in, and the last 40 seconds when he's waking up and he has a girl next to him and how he does it with his face rubbing off the makeup. He has been through six major incidents in the past three years. To me, he's suffering from trauma, depression, PTSD, and not having the chance to sit down and break it down and process it. 
to me, he needs help. And he's saying he needs help by lonely, lonely baby, referring to himself and using the lyrics to try and explain what's really going inside his head. Here's what happens in not just in music, but it could be in sports, could be in other relationships, could be in business. You go from being underground to the hottest guy. Song after song explodes. No one has streamed more to people saying, you're amazing, to going to, hey, after rolling loud, can't talk now, leave a message, get back to you, talk to my secretary, talk to my administrative assistant. We need to kind of reassess if you're going to be at the festival to you're being canceled. Literally, you go from like mega supernova to like ice, like no one wants to touch you. It's like you're toxic, you're radioactive. Here's the thing. He was already dealing a lot with a lot before Rolling Loud. This person's performed hundreds of times already. I mean, he's not an unseasoned performer. So why, why even say what he said? Think about it. He could have said anything. Why these particular comments, almost knowing he was going to get a huge backlash from the audience? To me, it's a cry for help. He's saying from the stage, he's saying, guys, can someone give me a release valve? I don't know what I'm saying, but the only way I can think I'm going to get your attention is to be so over the top that finally, 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 you have to look at me. I need time to decompress and get my life together. You see that in athletics, you see that in business, you see that at work. So many times I'm like, hey, I think this person's a little bit fried. This person needs a break. Take them off the line. They'll be fine. They know what the risks are. They know what the job is. What do you get? Accidents, fatigue, mistakes. You're not at the top of your game. I'm in pain. No love. Notice that line? There's no love at the top. The heads of the music industry, supposedly you're the people that sign you, your label and your manager, your assistant manager, your assistant to the assistant manager, and leeches and bottom feeders. Like, you know, he's talking about the fans, you know, the top and the bottom. Everyone wants a piece of you, but no one wants to give you anything back to keep you going and to keep your head together. Keep your head straight. The video bookends that because in the opening scene, you got the old man on the diabetic bike with the compression socks. No one can mess with me, I have a gun. Of course he's living a fantasy. But when, if, you know, if you ever know somebody that's living like that, they're not living. You know, he looked like he's like 300 pounds overweight, extremely high blood pressure, diabetes, eating 15, 20 pills a day. He's not all right. He's going three miles an hour on a scooter and he has a gun. Some of that's gonna make you feel powerful and special. The baby's kind of trying to tell you there's kind of a link here in a certain way. And here at the end of the video, the baby wakes up and has his back turned and is rubbing the make off. He's rubbing the makeup off. Because he realizes you can say what you want with a costume, have an alter ego, but in the end, I am who I am and I am lonely, lonely baby. We all go through that. And the concept of having alter egos or having masks. That goes, but that goes back to the Greeks when they were doing theater, you know, misery and comedy, happiness and sadness, love and death. It, people have been using masks in in theater, in movies, in film, in books forever. Alter ego, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's so common. And finally, you get the PSA. Everyone knows, a hundred percent of the time, people that are suffering from severe mental illness, you gotta get him help. Saying that himself out loud. Again, a cry for help. This is what happens when you're hit with multiple traumas and no one around you sees what is going on. And we've discussed this in other videos of artists that clearly to me, I'm watching the video, I'm reading the lyrics and I'm like, if this guy was my patient, I'd have this person admitted because something's not right. And I'm like, how does anyone else around this person not see the pain that they're going through? It's a great song, but to me, clinically, he's layering the message in the opening and ending of the video. The choice is the chorus, which is really the strength of a song, 
But this is, and using Little Wayne to tie it in all together. He didn't just, he could have picked a million different people to, to tie the song. Why did he pick Little Wayne? Because Little Wayne has the background, and unfortunately, he has himself. There's a connection there, there's roots. What is my message? The message is to be aware of what is going on around you. And if you're hurting, reach out. And if you see someone doing badly or struggling, go up and say to him, is everything okay? What's going on? How can I help? I'm concerned about you. Because you know what? You might just save a life. Everybody, thank you. Bruce Moffson, LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada.